Hey guys, Tomboy61, and today we have a light in the dark, the Halloween event for this update, the part two, the new of the PvE sort of missions for this game. We're going to be going over the ships, uh, commander builds, basically a full guide on how to get your five stars in this event. Uh, we'll be going kind of step by step and through a bunch of things, so if you're interested, uh, just stay tuned. Let's first start off with the event currency because that's probably why you are doing this event And I do think this is a nice thing that is different from the previous event where if you want to earn the maximum number of shards And therefore be able to say get two of the Halloween commanders for free or be able to purchase Genova and the other special rewards that are in the shop So first things first, let's go over all the ways you can earn the event currency aka the portal shards The first one is to get five stars i.e. complete all of the main objectives. For doing that, you will earn 1,000 of the shards and you'll be able to do that once. So you just need to worry about getting five stars once and we will definitely go through the, the ways to sort of accomplish that. The next way to earn portal shards is to uh, complete the Slaying Chimera Challenge. That is to get basically a very small amount of XP playing the Belafron. Uh, the Belafron was the reward ship from the last uh, part of this update, the last pve mission if you manage to earn her you can get 2000 portal shards by just simply pretty much just playing a match in her i think it's a very low amount of base xp you need to earn it'll take one or two matches it's very easy if you didn't earn belfron then you can also go over and purchase it for doubloons uh, you'll be able to do this three different times one each week that'll give you 6000 portal shards the next mission you can do to go ahead go ahead and earn portal shards is the all hallows eve mission this is one that refreshes every single day it'll give you 180 portal shards uh multiply that by the 20 days this event is going on that can net you 3600 portal shards for free that gives you a total of 10600 total total portal shards boy is that starting to become a tongue twister uh, if, if those are all the free ones, if you want more, there is a way to essentially pay for more. You'd have to go over into the shop, into the special tab, and the bundles of crates, of Halloween crates, do come with additional portal shards. The crates themselves won't have them in it. It's only in these larger bundles that you are going to be able to go ahead and obtain them. So, that's the ways you do that. How do you get the five stars? Well, there are five objectives you have to do on top of just the overall main objective so the overall main objective is there is the portal you need to hold as many towers as possible they are ticked down uh the the time for the portal to close uh, gets shorter the more towers that survive so if you can hold all three you'll have a significantly shorter amount of time to hold out than if you uh lose the towers so the first thing you have to do is have two of the towers survive this one is going to be accomplished mainly by positioning and um, basically being able to kill the ads, to use a sort of like destiny term, to kill the ships that don't really matter. Um, and we'll go over kind of how you want to do that. The next one is defend Transylvania. Uh, this one is also fairly simple. It's just about eliminating certain ads, um, the ones that spawn prior to uh, Rasputin. And we'll go over that positioning a little bit later. The next, uh, the next task that you need to accomplish is to destroy at least 22 enemy ships inside the filth the filth is that ever expanding green ring that sort of represents where the enemies will spawn but not really uh things that you have to remember with the filth is the filth will improve the concealment of all ships that are within it and it will also damage you if you go inside of it uh it will also heal the boss ships that being the great gorgon and rasputin uh, and speaking of those we'll go ahead and talk about them next. The Great Gorgon, well, it is the uh, it is the aircraft carrier that spawns around the five-ish minute mark into the game. It spawns at one of three locations. Basically, it spawns at the portal, either on the left side, the right side, or directly behind it and sails through it. The easiest way to kind of locate where it is is as soon as it spawns, it's going to launch some fighter aircraft, and you will be able to see that on the map. You may not know uh, where the ship is exactly, but if you keep an eye when you get the notification that says Great Gorgon has appeared, you should be able to go ahead and look on over at, at the map and see where a fighter or a torpedo squadron just got launched from. And that's going to give you a very good idea of where Gorgon is. Uh, Gorgon 
Uh, other thing to just keep in mind, it has about 150,000 uh, XP. Generally, taking it out is going to be uh, down to either the cruisers or the uh, destroyers of the game. Rasputin, well, that you've met Rasputin before, and now you're going to kill him again. Uh, Rasputin is going to be the enemy battleship. He's going to spawn in one of three places. Think of it kind of like a triangle around that first tower is one of the spawns. Uh, two of them are outside of the filth, and one of them is, like, at the edge slash inside of the filth. Like, every time he spawns on that one, he seems to be in the filth, and that's when it gets a little bit rough to take him out. Uh, he also has 150,000 XP. Uh, your main objective is if he doesn't spawn, spawn in the filth, take him out before he does, because, like we said earlier, he will end up healing once he is inside the uh once he's inside the area now as far as enemy ships the ads that i would call them um you have three sort of ships that you are uh, concentrating on the first one is going to be the varg it's the reskinned bismarck things for you to note it has only has thirty thousand uh hit points so relatively easy to knock down compared to its matchmaking counterpart the next is the scarab the Charles martel uh, it has fifteen thousand health and uh it can be overmatched by the Turpitz's guns if you are running the uh, the battleship. And the final ship that you will see that makes up the ads is going to be the Ghoul. It's bent based on the Benson, and it only has 5,000 hit points. Now, as far as ships that you will be using to accomplish this and the builds for them as far as the commanders, let's go ahead and talk them through. The first one, let's go ahead and talk through Magnu S, a.k.a the turpits now as far as commanders go you do have the choice between hj hyde and clara teslau i have definitely gone towards hyde i think his abilities are much better for this ship as far as a build goes for him um we're we're running flamble cannoneer porcupine marksmanship properly meticulous and will to rebuild though of course you're more than free to experiment the thing that you have to know about all of these ships is they have unique abilities, and these unique abilities are kind of the key to mastering this game. Um, some other just kind of weird little, uh, or just some other stats on the the Turpits with this build. First things first, this is a ship that has a much nerfed range. Um, you're looking at 73,000 73, hit points, um, uh, 8.6 kilometer main battery, 9 kilometer secondary battery, so... With this build, the Magnu S actually has a longer range secondary than a primary and six kilometers on the torps. Uh, the, as far as the two consumables, these are the things that you need to learn and master. Of course, it does have the damage control party. It's going to last for 10 seconds and reload in 30 seconds. But the more important things are the two unique ones. The first one is Repair Zone. What Repair Zone does is it puts an AoE kind of effect around you. It both heals you and any friendly ships within that area. It's going to last for 60 seconds and it's going to reload after 60 seconds and you get five charges of it. So be prepared to run it. Make sure you're keeping an eye on your health and more importantly, the friendlies around you's health because you may be able just to help out. Um, if you have two Turpitzes, uh, being able to switch off because it's a 60 second uptime. So what you can do is basically literally flip A and B, A and B uh, in order to always have some sort of heal if you guys are rolling together. The next thing, and this is probably the most important skill you need to know about, is the electric shield. It will make you invulnerable to all damage beyond fire and flooding damage. Um, for a limited amount of time, in this case 10 seconds, going to take 40 seconds to reload, you get four charges of it. Well, you know what you can do with this? You can absolutely go in and ram uh, either of the boss ships and just take no damage, or you could ram any other ship and take no damage. But more importantly, what you will want to do is ram the boss ships, and that will take them down in one hit, and it will be relatively quick for you, which is an absolute uh, benefit. As far as, as far as a strategy goes, for the Turpit, um, I the best way I can think of it is to say, kind of play at the edge of the filth. You want to be the one drawing the attention of the enemy ships, right? You are, you are a tank. You have way more health than anyone else. You have way more armor than anyone else. You want to be drawing the attention. As far as, if you kind of think of this game um, in a in a early, mid, and late game, early game, I don't think anyone really needs to worry about anything it's just about setting yourself up for the position 
Uh, the Bismarck is really good at staying pretty much anywhere at the edge of the filth. You just need to be very wary and ready to take on any elements. Um, be ready to ram Rasputin. Uh, being around that first tower uh, is a good play for you because if he spawns nearby, you are able to kind of get in and eliminate him rather quickly. Um, once that gets done, start to move sort of towards the middle of the map um, to help protect Transylvania. Basically what happens is that second tower gets, uh, or the first tower has spawned on it uh, two groups of adds at the five minute mark and plus Rasputin. Um, and as a team, you really want to eliminate all of those bad guys really quickly because they can do relatively high damage to not only destroying that first tower if they get within range, but also once that first tower is destroyed, they generally go, oh look, Transylvania, I wanna shoot Transylvania. And then you have to kind of deal with them. So be prepared to deal with them. Uh, the, the Magnu S is pretty good at kind of sitting along that upper edge of the filth near Transylvania slash near like the, the upper left side to the upper right side of, of the map in the middle-ish area. That's where you wanna be. You kinda wanna be in the center ready to um, deal with anything that comes your way. The next ship that we have is going to be the Savatsazar. Savatsazar? It's, it's the Russian cruiser, guys. Um, as far as the commander goes for it, I am running Einstein because it has just terrible tra turret traverse and it will absolutely save your life having a much quicker turret traverse. Uh, I'm running Einstein, of course, his base trait helps with that turret traverse and then just straight offensive skills. Uh, that's that's all you need to worry about. I go straight down the right hand side because the cruiser is the DPM machine. It is the one that is absolutely balls to the wall, crazy, doing the high damage, taking care of the ads. That is your job essentially is to one, provide vision, but more importantly, stay at range, deal with uh, enemy ships, help out with damage, not be afraid to switch between HE and AP. You have what is essentially the fastest fire rate of any of the ships um, that are played by the friendly characters. So make sure you take advantage of it. As far as the skills for this ship, well, of course you do have that damage control party, 10 second uh, consumable duration with a 30 second reload. Then we have inversion charge, which I call this the John Wick skill is my shorthand for it. It boosts your main rat battery reload by 25%. It lasts for 30 seconds. It, um, it takes 45 seconds to reload and you get six of the charges. And what it does is it, uh, it basically any damage you do to enemies, you heal that damage back, which is absolutely incredible. That is, that is like the most powerful thing you can do. It will keep you alive and uh, you feel just awesome when you op when you activate this reload booster and you are just taking out scarabs left and right, taking out the Bensons. Your main job, I would say, is to probably focus on the Bensons and scarabs, and then if you have spare shots, light the uh, the Bismarck ships on fire just to start doing damage over time, helping out what you can. But your main role is adds, um, just kind of thinning the herd so that your two other kinds of ships can go ahead and concentrate on taking out the big guys. Of course, uh, they are more than welcome to also shoot at everyone else, but you, you really just kind of need to concentrate on taking out the ads just because you have such a higher DPM that you should be able to, with relative ease, to kind of out damage anyone else on your team. The other skill that you have that I don't see enough players using when they are using Savatsazar is the radar. Um, I think this is just a holdover from matchmaking where you have a very limited number of radars. This is an unlimited use consumable. There, You don't have a number of radar charges. You can use the radar at all times, and it is an incredible radar. 15 kilometer radar, it's gonna last for 45 seconds, and it's gonna reload after 45 seconds. And this is incredibly powerful. Um, basically, what the cruiser needs to be doing is kind of playing the center line. Uh, if you see the line that is between the three uh, towers, that is where it's very easy and nice for the cruiser to sit. Um, it can kind of go off to the left a little to get a little bit closer to where the ads spawn for that first tower. But um, using use the, the cruiser 
um, has this incredible radar and incredible range compared to everyone else. So it can easily kind of outrange anyone else, keep the radar lit, which means you're going to be, uh, it's going to be way easier for you to see the enemies that are in the smoke, because guess what guys, that is probably the biggest threat to your battleships is going to be the destroyers coming off of the ghouls. So if you can, if you can kill the ships in the filth, if you can light them up in the filth with your radar, your team is going to be at a huge advantage. And that's exactly what you need to be doing is to be going in there and using um, your radar as much as possible um, because you have that 15 kilometers. You can easily probably spot uh, the, the enemy ships that are in the filth, including Gorgon when it spawns. I know I definitely had a thing where I was like, okay, well let's, let's uh, keep at the edge of the filth and light it. And I was able to see Gorgon and help take her out. These like, that is your role kind of, kind of stay and make sure ships are well between you. And, friendly ships are between you and the, uh, the enemy. If that makes sense, you, you're, you're playing essentially a backline role but you are the key to DPM, and that's exactly what you need to be. Um, the final ship that you will be playing is Urashima. She is a Kagero. Uh, as far as commanders go, I recommend Namasaru Sanu. Uh, he's the new one, and I think he's the only new commander that I've recommended uh, out of the three new ones. Base trait is going to help with dispersion, and then we're running Subsurface Venture, Look at Me Now, Torpedo Safari, Smoke on the Water, and Give Me Speed. I know a lot of people will usually run un Unstoppable, but we'll talk about why we're running Give Me Speed right now as we talk about the consumables. You do have a full complement of consumables on this one. Damage Control Part, it's going to last 10 seconds, reload in 30 seconds. Then we have Steam Engine Boost, and this is why we are running um, that perk. Because this counts as an engine boost, and that perk allow boosts the engine boost, in this case... Um, steam engine boost is an excellent kind of utility. It allows you to heal, um, which is very nice when you are inside the filth. It's going to give you a 10% boost to your max speed. It's going to last 96 seconds. It's going to reload in 24 seconds, and you're going to have eight charges of it when you run that skill. The other systems are going to be anti-guidance system, which boosts enemy dispersion when targeting you by 29,900% which is ridiculous, though I've still taken hits when I've had it. So uh, even when secondaries are boosted to that ridiculousness, you can still get hit by secondaries. Uh, it's going to last 40 seconds. It's going to reload in 45 seconds, and you have five charges of it. And then you do also have a torpe uh, torpedo reload booster, which is going to reload your uh, torpedoes. It takes 90 seconds to refresh, and you get four charges of it. As far as uh, what Urashima needs to do, I will say this is the most difficult ship to play properly. You do want to pretty much exclusively stick to uh, using only your torpedoes and only use guns at the absolute, like, most necessary of, like, oh, crap, I just got spotted while in the filth with a ghoul. As far as what Urashima should be doing, pretty much playing uh, the line of the filth or being ready to dive bomb into the filth. Uh, the Urashima... Is, is comfortable in the filth. It gets like a two kilometer detection, 2.3 kilometer detection when it's in the filth. So it's very happy in there. You just need to be very wary of the enemy ships that are in there. Um, and your key objective, while yes, is to torpedo the ads, but be prepared to get out and uh, ambush the two boss ships at spawn. Because if you have a full load of torpedoes and then you use your reload booster, you will be able to take out the the ships with four like with four shots of your torpedoes. So basically, as soon as they spawn, if you are lucky enough to be by them or for them to be in range, and you can get the majority of your torpedoes to hit, you can take out the boss ships re really quickly, and uh, that absolutely wins it for your team. As far as how the destroyer plays, like I said, you kind of play the edge of the the you play the edge of the filth um, up until like the four minute mark. That's the five or the five minute remaining mark. And that's when you either a get ready to, uh, to do your run on Rasputin or you see where the great Gorgon spawns and you kind of go in for the kill on the Gorgon. Uh, and while you do that, you do absolutely want to be kind of looking around, making sure 
that uh, you're dropping torps whenever possible. And uh, yeah, that's what Urashima needs to be running. And with all of that, that is sort of my guide as far as what needs to go on. Um, basically, you want to, to keep one ship escorting Transylvania, a, a battleship nearish Transylvania, just to keep it, uh, to have all the attention drawn off of it. And then for your other guys, you want certain other people doing that DPM. But guys, that is uh, my guide. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.